All right, I'm going to keep this short and sweet because I want to get going. I'm here in Beanley. In fact, I'm right outside Beanley Library. And um, today I'm going to be walking from here outside the library to Southport on the Gold Coast. And it is an absolutely beautiful day right now. Uh, it's about seven degrees or eight degrees. Sunrise was about 25 minutes ago. I think it's about 38 or 40 kilometers to to Southport from here. So it's going to it's going to take all day. So I've got my backpack. I think I know the way there. There's some little bits where there's roundabouts and tricky little bits where there may not be any footpaths or bike paths or anything, but it uh, should be okay. All right, better get going. Over in the distance, you can see the Beanley Rum Distillery, which has been there since, I don't know, about 1870 something, very old historic place. And just over here is Mount Stapleton. That used to be called Yellowwood Hill. And I don't know if you can see it because of the, the sunrise, but uh, there's a golf ball on top. That's actually a weather radar. Apparently when you're walking, if there's no footpath um, or you know obvious pedestrian way, and you're walking near to the road, you have to walk on the right side. So you can see oncoming traffic. Yeah, hope that's uh, the right advice. Guess you can hear that noise there. That's the highway, that's the M1 to the Gold Coast. And one of the realities of walking to the Gold Coast is that you're gonna be following that for most of the way. Trying to get across roundabouts is one of the trickiest things, especially at peak hour, there's so much traffic here. So what I'm carrying with me is, apart from the, the phone here, my iPhone 11 um, Pro Max or Max Pro, whatever it is, I'm also carrying a, um, it's a little Little Osmo Action, uh, DJI Osmo Action. I also pack two bottles of water, sun cream, which I should put on pretty soon. Um, what else? Oh yeah, um, battery power. That's right. External battery sources, just in case the camera runs out. The because um, it's a new phone, the battery should last a long time, and I'm using the the DJI Osmo Action camera as well, which does give better picture quality but I haven't really used this new phone all that much and that's got apparently some really good um, it's got a good camera in it so we'll see how they compare later something I should mention at this point about three weeks ago maybe four weeks ago I broke the little toe on my left foot uh, I was in the process of moving and I walked into the room and I accidentally kicked one of the packing boxes and uh, the toe got bent out to the side so it's healing well so uh, this is a, a long walk with a healing broken toe. Just thought you should know. Okay, a lot of traffic here. Looks like people are trying to get both north and south. 
is much nicer than being in traffic. Birdies. Little field right next to the creek here. Next to the road. But it's, uh, I don't know what those are, kind of water lilies or something, but there's tens of thousands of them. I've always had a little bit of a fascination with these low industry areas. I'm going through one now, the Yatla Enterprise area or whatever it's called. I don't know, there's something uh, just so busy and productive and well ordered and neat and clean about them. There's, this is where people go to work. Obviously they go to work in other places, but they're, they're just busy. It's, it's business, you get on with it. All, all the different companies along here all doing their thing it's just buildings and um, people going to work and that's it I don't know it's very hard to describe it there's no houses or anything that's not meant to be pretty or or showy it's just very functional kind of feels very safe I think that's maybe what I'm thinking that people going here to these places and working and then going home again there's order here there's it's it's reliable you know. pedestrians watch your step okay <laughs> Had a little stop over at Ormo Village, just had to go to the men's room, had something to eat, and have a drink of water, and on my way again. Now, I think this is the Pimpamar area, but I don't think it was always called Pimpamar. Well, I think that the pronunciation is Pimpama. I was talking to one of the Aboriginal elders last year when I was working as a local heritage specialist, and he was saying that the pronunciation is Pimpama, but everyone these days calls it Pimpama. I think that's correct. Clear sky, there's one cloud just passing by. Zoom back out. Just one cloud. Looks nice. Looks like a place for horses. There's an old viewing platform here, which I stood here once many, many years ago. You can see the highway, but it's all been blocked off, but someone's cut a hole through. So I'm gonna go through as well. Weird. Better get going. Still got a long way to go. I, don't, I can't really judge it. I think it's going to be about seven or eight hours, but I don't know. Um, all of these roads that I've been walking on are you know, going exactly where I, where I need to go. And I've got a funny feeling that this road may have been the original road between like Logan and, um, and the Gold Coast. I think it might be. It's, uh, 
it goes exactly the same direction. It's only two lanes, and it just passed that church that I was at, Pimpermar Church and Cemetery. So I got a feeling, yeah, this might be the old highway to the Gold Coast. Pimpermar is quite interesting, actually. I think I'm at the southern end of it now, but there's a whole bunch of old houses here. It's like it was once a little village, just in the you know, halfway between Brisbane and the Gold Coast. I live in an old house up there. In. Now it's all being developed and old things coming down and new things coming up, but a lot of the old houses are still here, so kind of nice if they retain some of its original, I don't know, well I guess they're not going to, there's a for sale sign just over there. It's all going to be developed. Yeah, well, that's the way of things. But yes, this was the road to the Gold Coast, this is the old highway. It's like a kestrel. So this is where the old strawberry farm was. It was a landmark along the highway for, for decades. And the land where the strawberry farm was is now a massive housing estate. And the development just keeps going. I've got my umbrella at the moment. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna need it. A few magpies flying around. Now it's not magpie season yet. I don't think that starts till about August, really. Although I got swooped on once in July, but anyway. I've got the umbrella out just in case I have to put that up. I guess this is for maybe a new industrial estate or a or housing one or the other. Huge blocks. They got King Kong in there. And I actually just noticed this. Look, I'll turn the camera around. It's a little little shrine. Way, way off in the distance, over there, is the Tower of Terror, part of Dreamworld. And to be honest, I don't know if Dreamworld's open at the moment. What with the COVID-19 virus, I think it may be closed. I guess we'll find out soon. So there's Dreamworld and it's definitely closed at the moment because of the virus. It's the Tower of Terror. Pretty noisy along here. Many years ago I used to work on the Big Brother TV show as a story assistant and Big Brother is here at Dreamworld. It's over the other side of it. And um, so I went to Dreamworld a lot. We were allowed to get into the park for free. And I remember coming here even earlier when we first moved up from Sydney. And one of the first places we went to in terms of tourist attractions after we settled into our new house was Dreamworld and we thought it was wonderful. We'd heard all about it in Sydney and we were excited to go here. I just stopped by the Coomera Police Station because I've come to the Coomera River and the Dreamworld Parkway, the road that goes across there, is way too narrow and busy to cross on foot. And I could probably try and risk it, but I don't want to. So I went into the police station and asked them, and uh, the lady kindly gave me some directions about how to get across the river. So there's the Coomera River, and uh, wow, it's wider than I thought. Obviously, I'm not gonna swim across it, but... Uh... So that's the Dreamworld Parkway. That's the road I thought I could walk across to get over the river, but I can't, so that's quite nice here. So this is Coomera, and for me, I don't know, it's kind of like the beginning of the Gold Coast, even though I've already been walking through the Gold Coast for about a couple of hours. This looks and feels more like Gold Coast, so anyway, let's give it a go. 
Okay, that's better. <laughs> the lady at the police station was absolutely correct. This is the way to get across the Coomera River. The breeze has really picked up. Very nice, but uh, I think I might, my hat's going to blow off. So what's happening now is I've had to come to the opposite side of the highway because I couldn't get across the bridge that I wanted to. It was too, too narrow. Anyway, got right here. But I'm on, I think, the wrong side of the highway now. Of course, I'm still heading south, but I've got to get back to the other side. And I've just had a look on maps, and I think that there's a pedestrian bridge going over the highway a few kilometres that way. So um, we'll give that a go. So that's the, uh, I think that's the Oxley Tavern. This is a really busy area here now. Uh, Hope Island's that way, but I think I need to keep going further south before I head towards the coast. So I'm currently walking through Oxenford and there's a nice little change. There's this terrific footpath. Uh, looks like it goes on for kilometers. It's, it even shows up on, on maps, on Google Maps and everything. It's a very, very long footpath. Highway's over there somewhere. It's fairly quiet here and Oh, this is this is much nicer than trying to negotiate round roundabouts and traffic intersections and all that. So, movie world is definitely closed as well, like uh, like Dream World. Um, so it's kind of eerie when no one's there. Just looking at the security fence around movie world. I noticed that they have what seems to be the village road show symbol on top of the fences and I thought, well, if you're trying to break in and you impale yourself, what a way to go. Impaled by village road show logo. That's that huge golf thing they've got here. God, it's enormous. And all the people are way, way at the back there that I can tee off. The net is high enough so that uh, the golf balls don't land on a car on the M1. And I suppose it's the same deal with uh, these other touristy places. Australian Outback Spectacular, which I've never been to, that looks closed. And Wet n Wild, I think that's what it's called next door, that looks closed as well. I can never resist a plaque. What does this say? Bernie J. Smith, 17th of the 969 to the 2nd of the 7th, 2007. We will never forget your smile and the way you made us laugh. A true Aussie who will be remembered and loved always by family and friends. Ride on Bernie, Kumra Cruiser Life member. Okay. All right, Bernie. It's quite a little memorial there next to the road. All right, 1994. Let's give it a go. I've seen this bridge countless times when I've driven to the Gold Coast but I've never actually walked over it and I didn't know where it started or where it finished but I've got a good idea where it finishes now the M1 on that footbridge and uh, thankfully finally moving away from the highway moving generally eastwards now I think I'm going to go through some suburban areas but it's just good to be away from that noise you can still hear it um, but this is nice Well, there's my first view of some of the Gold Coast buildings, so they still look like a very long way away. Okay, so just having a little stop over and rest my feet. That's them there. Um, feet are very, very sore, um, but it's okay. It's, uh, I just needed a break for a few minutes. Now I've got to decide whether I'm going to go along Smith's Road, or I think Smith Street, towards Southport or I take another road which I don't know what it's called it's another highway and it goes through some mangrovey nature reserve kind of thing 
Both ways look really good. I'm just not sure which one has the better pathways, like you know, bike paths or walking tracks and things like that. I think the mangrovey one does, um, and it's probably a little bit quicker. So I'll give that a try. So I started walking along the Gold Coast Highway. Instantly, the footpath disappeared. So I crossed to the other side of the road. Ooh, wattle. And the path went on for a little bit, for a couple of minutes, and now it's taking me down through here, when I don't know where here is. So I'll see which way it goes. So along the Gold Coast Highway here, there's a lot of mangroves. And as I mentioned in a previous video, a lot of the inland area of Gold Coast was all swamp. It's called the Albert Swamp. And uh, mangrovey and swampy, and it smells like that too. Anyway, so that's the path ahead. Still got my fingers crossed that it keeps going all the way to, um, well, to the Southport area. This is definitely the longest walk I've ever done, which is good. You've got to keep pushing yourself. I thought it would be about seven or eight hours. It's about seven and a half hours now and I've still got a long way to go. I think it's about 2.30, so I probably won't be at the beach until maybe about 5 p.m. or so. And sunset is about five o'clock at this time of year in this part of the world. So it'll be uh, getting dark when I get there. Feet are hurting quite a lot, but not crippling. On a scale of one to 10, probably a, a six. And legs are all right. Overall energy level's fine. I, it's not the distance, it's just my, uh, yeah, my feet are sore, especially because I had the broken toe. And I just say, this, this road goes on forever. My uh, feet are killing me. I've been walking for about eight hours, eight and a quarter hours. So not complaining. Um, I think I've done pretty well. You do get sore feet when you walk, but yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing that Pacific Ocean. She's got the right idea. I think next time I come down here, I'll bicycle. Wow. So that's the broad water. Just beyond those trees and bushes over there is the Pacific Ocean. Cool. A little way to go yet, but feels like I'm on the home stretch. A glucose tablet. Um, for some reason, I need to take glucose. Well, I think I do anyway. Um, just across there is Southport. Well, I'm in Southport here. But when I did my walk from the New South Wales border to Southport, this is where I finished, just over there.
So the sun has set. Beautiful evening. As exhausted as I am, that's a beautiful sight. That's well worth the effort. Longer than I thought, but made it. Oh yeah, well, I guess I better get home. <laughs> oh, thanks for watching the, uh, the walk, that was pretty epic. I'm sore everywhere, especially my left shoulder. Feet are killing me. That water is very nice, I oh, can't. There it is, the Pacific Ocean. All right. Please hit the subscribe button, leave a comment or two, and I'll see you again soon.